two of the most special Ferraris of the modern era, the 599 GTO, and in some ways its successor, the F12 TDF. So V12 limited edition front engine Ferraris. Uh, today we're gonna to compare the two, compare the way they look, the way they sound, we'll look at the usability, the performance, um, and later on we'll discuss the market, where they both sit in the market today, what might be the better buy, and where might they end up in the future. We might discuss a little bit about the 812 lightweight when that comes out, what we can expect from that. Um, but stick around, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so I want to give you a little bit of background and history on the two cars. Um, so the 599 GTO was launched back in 2010, almost a decade ago. How crazy is that? Um, most cars were registered in 2011, like this one. Um, the 599 is the third Ferrari to wear the famous GTO badge. Um, of course, the most famous and most valuable car of all time, the 250 GTO back from the 1960s, um, was the first car to wear the GTO badge. Still the most expensive car ever sold at auction, $48 million. Um, the second uh, Ferrari to wear the GTO badge was the 288 GTO. Um, this was back in the 1980s, and that car was really the first of the halo Ferraris, um, which the F40, F50, Enzo, and LaFerrari have, have really followed on from. Um, so yeah, a very important badge, a very important name, and the 599 is definitely more than worthy of that badge. Okay, so officially there are 599 of these worldwide, as you might have expected. Um, all of these were sold out before the car even launched. The Ferrari handpicked their VIP customers to get cars like this. Um, we believe there are 60 UK supplied right-hand drive cars. Um, today, there's probably a few more than that registered in the UK because I think quite a lot of left-hand drive cars got imported over the last sort of five or six years. Um, but it is still a very, very rare car. So the F12 TDF, so this is basically the spiritual successor to a Ferrari from the 1950s called the 250 GT Berlinetta Tour de France. Um, so that car uh, won numerous races back in the 1950s called the Tour de France race. Um, so the TDF is not actually allowed to use the Tour de France full name, something to do with a, some cycling race, um, but it is. it does use the TDF. Um, and it was launched back in 2015. I think most cars really were registered 2016, 2017, um, and there are 799 of these worldwide. Um, of course, all of those were sold out before the car even launched, again, to the VIP hand-picked Ferrari customers. Um, there are obviously 200 more than the GTO, um, but we believe there are about 50 or 60 UK supply cars, so pretty similar to the GTO. Again, it still is a very rare car. Okay, so we just wanted to talk a little bit about the styling and the design of the two cars. Um, so the 599 GTO, most of you will know, it was based on the 599 GTB, uh, which was Ferrari's flagship car between 2007 and 2012. Ferrari actually say this is more of a road legal version of their 599XX, which was a track only, very extreme race car. But look, it doesn't look drastically different from the GTB. Um, it does have a lot more road presence, it's more aggressive. Um, but yeah, I love this big muscular bonnet on the 599. Um, so you get this sort of raised area through the middle and these four scoops. Down here, you've got these big air intakes, and then you've got the carbon fiber splitter underneath. Um, this car actually has the optional um, carbon fiber surrounds for the lights. Then the wheels, so these are the 20 inch forged lightweight wheels. I believe Ferrari used a very similar style on the F12 Berlinetta as well. These have got carbon ceramic brakes. This was the second generation of carbon ceramic brakes, first car to use them. And so they're a lot lighter. Um, I think the whole car is actually 100 kilograms lighter than the 599 GTB. Um, you will notice these little metal discs um, which sit outside of the brake discs. Ferrari call these the wheel donuts. Don't ask me why. 
Um, but they're there to improve brake cooling, improve aerodynamics as well. Another little feature I like on the 599 GTO is the wing mirrors with this sort of dual spoke. Um, this car's got the carbon fiber side skirts. Um, you will notice a lot of GTOs actually come with the full sill in carbon fiber, but I do like this sort of sleek look. Um, one of the most distinctive features on the 599 is definitely these. These are called the flying buttresses. Um, this was actually initially a design idea from Pininfarina um, who styled the car just to give the car more flair. Um, but Ferrari only accepted to add these once they realized they would actually improve the aerodynamics of the car because you get all the airflow that comes through there. Um, so you'll notice the contrast colored roof. This is a signature of the 599 GTOs. A lot of them actually have a matte painted roof. Um, but this one's called Nero Sasuto, which translates to silky black. Um, so on the rear end of the car, you can see it's muscular, um, it's chunky back here. You've got, the, you've got the GTO badging, you've got this raised sort of uh, spoiler on the back, and you've got this big carbon fiber diffuser with the twin tailpipes either side. Um, look, it's, it is a great looking car. As I said, it's not drastically different from the 599 GTB. Um, you know, this, in this paint, it's called Rosso Formula One 2007, which is an optional, optional paint. Um, most cars are pretty traditional on the GTO, so you've got your reds, your blacks, your greys, your whites. Some cars do have a racing stripe um, on the bonnet, um, but compared to the F12 TDF, most GTOs are more traditional. Okay, so onto the F12 TDF. So this car is in the launch color of Giallo Triplo Strato, which is triple layer yellow paint. Um, but the TDF is a very distinctive car in its own right. It really is a big leap forward from the F12 Berlinetta. Um, where the F12 Berlinetta had a sort of subtle elegance, the TDF is just bonkers. Um, so you've got this crazy front bumper down here where there's so much going on with the air intakes, the scoops, the fins. Um, it just looks crazy. Um, this car's also got the optional, like the GTO, the carbon fiber surround to the headlights. It's obviously got a much more modern design than the GTO. Um, you've also got these big scoops in the bonnet, helping with airflow and cooling. Um, but this is probably the, one of the most distinctive features of the TDF is these. They're called the aero bridges. Obviously air is coming straight down here and channeled right through down the side of the car. So the wheels on the TDF, these are the 20 inch forged wheels. So these are diamond cut, sort of two-tone finish. Um, you've also got these huge carbon ceramic brakes there, also from the LaFerrari. Down here, you've got these carbon fiber side skirts, but these are much more pronounced. They really stick out um, and, and just make the car look a lot more aggressive. So you, you're never gonna, um, be, you're, you're never gonna confuse the F12 TDF with the Berlinetta. Um, this little feature here I've always found quite interesting because it's actually made of sort of this rubber um, and attached to the window sills, but it's just helping with aero again. Um, another signature design feature of the TDF are these louvres here, which are really a nod to Ferrari's past from the 250s. Um, big aluminium fill cap on the TDF. And then round the back, you've got this much more sort of pronounced um, rear spoiler, which is bigger than it is on the GTO. You've got this beautiful carbon fiber strip that goes along the whole rear of the car. You've got the carbon fiber surrounds for the exhausts and also this big carbon fiber diffuser with the fog lamp integrated. Um, I mean, this is a very high spec car. It's pretty much got every option ticked. Um, but yeah, with the F12 TDF, you will see a much bigger variation of specs. There's some crazy colors, there's tailor-made examples. So it's definitely a sign of the recent times where personalization has really become big business for Ferrari. Okay, so moving on to the interiors. So on the 599 GTO, to some it may seem a little dated, but I still think it's super cool. Uh, and the condition of this car literally feels brand new. Um, so you've got Alcantara throughout and carbon fiber. Um, you'll notice on this car, it's got gloss carbon fiber. On most GTOs, you'll have satin carbon fiber. Um, but I do like the gloss in this car, which is on the steering wheel. It's on the inner sill trim. It's on the center console. It's also got the rear bench trim in carbon fiber. Um, but it does have some more traditional aspects. So you've got this traditional 
handbrake, which is one of the last Ferraris to actually use that. Um, you've also got traditional indicators with the stalks uh, rather than on the steering wheel like you'll see on the TDF. You've got big carbon fiber paddles. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a cool, quite raw, still stripped out interior. So although the 509 GTO was really built for the road, it's got lots of track orientated features. Um, so you start off with the carbon fiber racing seats, which are nice and snug. Uh, so you've got the LED steering wheel, which you'll find on a lot of Ferraris these days. It lights up at the optimum time to change gear. As you can see, we've got the four point harnesses. Um, this car's also been spec with the roll cage and the fire extinguisher. It's also got Ferrari telemetry, which is this REC button. So this thing's definitely been specced out for the track if you do want to take it there. One of my favorite features on the 599 GTO is this, this carbon fiber grab handle, which is for the passenger, basically just to hold on for dear life. Um, some nice little special touches on the GTO as well. You get this limited edition badge here, one of 599 worldwide. You've also got this badge here, uh, showing you Ferrari have won 31 Formula One titles. Um, so look, although this thing has been stripped out and it feels very raw, there's still a few home comforts. You've got the radio and navigation, you've got the Bose sound system. So this thing is equally uh, adept on the road as it is on the track. Okay, so the interior of the F12 TDF, you'll notice it's a lot more sophisticated as it's more refined than the GTO. Um, you'll see Alcantara everywhere. Um, it's quite a unique color scheme, this one. It's charcoal, Alcantara. We've got sort of yellow stitching and yellow sort of piping around. You've got the yellow central seat stripe here. Um, you've also got satin carbon fiber throughout, um, different to the gloss of the GTO. Um, you've got it on the steering wheel. You've got it on the center console here, on the dash. You've also got the optional carbon rear bench trim. Um, but you've also got uh, on the steering wheel, you've got a lot more going on compared to the GTO. So you've got the Manatino switch, um, but you've also got this button here, which is for the bumpy road mode. Uh, you've got indicators here on the steering wheel, um, and you've also got the LED steering wheel like the GTO. Okay, so whereas the 599 GTO had a lot more track friendly features, I think the F12 TDF is actually a much easier car to live with. That's because it's got a lot more technology and convenience features. Um, so you've now got the dual digital display, which is a lot more intuitive than it was before. Um, you've got things like Apple CarPlay, cameras, you've now got suspension lift, which you press this button here and it lowers and raises the suspension. Um, you've also got the cool feature, which is optional of passenger display, which means the passenger can be involved and see some of the stats going on. Um, it's also a little more driver focused. So you've got these three buttons, this new layout here, which is actually facing the driver. Um, you've got lots of little convenient options as well, like the, the, the um, cup holder in the center here, you've got storage nets. So it's definitely uh, more refined and it's come a long way since the GTO. It definitely feels a lot more modern. Okay, so on to what the petrol heads might say is the most important part of the car, the engines. Um, so on the 509 GTO, you have a six liter V12, naturally aspirated. Um, this thing produces 670 brake horsepower. When it first came out, it was the fastest Ferrari ever made, the fastest road car. Um, and it was actually faster around the track than Ferrari Enzo, which was very impressive. Has a top speed of 208 miles an hour and does 0 to 62 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds. Very, very impressive, especially for its time. But obviously the TDF is a much newer car, it's a new generation. Um, so it's no surprise it's faster and more powerful. So it actually has a 6.3 litre V12 in this, naturally aspirated again, and it produces 770 brake horsepower, which is just insane amount of power. Top speed of 211 miles an hour, so not much difference, but does 0 to 62 half a second quicker. Um, interestingly though, it is not qu as quick around the track as the LaFerrari, um, but the LaFerrari does have a little bit of hybrid assistance, so maybe it can be forgiven. But look, let's get behind the wheel of both cars, let's see how they sound and see how they drive. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna take both cars out for a very short drive just to get a little bit of flavor and feel uh, for how each car drives. Um, if you're used to driving the latest generation of supercars, uh, one of the first things you'll notice when you get in the GTO 
is the single clutch gearbox, which as you step up the gears, you feel each gear using the paddles. It's not as bad as many single clutch gearboxes, um, and I personally really actually enjoy the feel of each gear. It adds a bit of character, it's a bit more involving, but I understand some people prefer the smooth transition, the smooth seamless transitions of the dual clutch gearbox. Um, yeah, this car in very low gears, it's a little bit jerky, but it's nowhere near as bad actually as I thought it would be. Um, and it still feels raw, it still feels aggressive, um, and there's loads of power. remember the 599 was a Grand Tourer and it is this the GTO although it's got lots of track orientations about it it is still a road car so it does still feel quite civilized it's raw but it is you can you could use this daily I mean maybe with the harnesses it's, it's, it's not a the most practical um, and this is really for high days and holidays and track days if you that way inclined. Um, there's so much traction and stability. This car's always working. It feels like it's always trying to keep you keep you on track. Um, but it is, you know, there's there's so much power. So it's it's no surprise that Ferrari have to put in lots of sort of electronic stuff to keep keep the car you know, keep the car going straight. I guess um, one of the big things they've changed with the TDF um, over the GTO is the addition of rear wheel steering um, that makes the car so much more agile uh, much sharper handling it makes the car actually feel a lot smaller than it is uh, whereas the GTO it feels like a big big car it was a TDF it just it just has more agility still have some of those Grand Tour qualities at low speeds it feels very civilized this is quite an easy car to live with you know you could potentially use it every day the suspension is firm because uh, it basically is a race car built for the road but holding some of those Grand Touring qualities from the F12 Berlinetta So let's discuss the market on these two very special cars. Um, so the GTO really came out in sort of 2010, 2011. Um, the base price of the car was about 300,000 pounds and then with options, most cars were closer to 350,000 um, pounds. When they first came out, there was probably a few cars that sold for premiums, but they never really went anywhere in value. 
Um, that was until about 2015 when the market really started booming and literally within a blink of an eye, they were suddenly 500 grand. Um, then there were 600 grand. And then you started seeing a lot more left-hand drive examples coming into the country being imported because they were a lot better value. Um, then the TDF came out and it dragged them up even further. So I think in about 2017, they were regularly selling for about 700,000 pounds. I remember some dealers asking over 800,000 pounds for them. Um, whether they sold or not, I'm, I'm not quite sure. But, but yeah, look, the last 18 months, they've really come back down to reality. Uh, most right-hand drive cars are between five and 600,000. Um, you might get a very low delivery mileage car, closer to 700. Um, but yeah, they, they are very much assured of their place in history. I do think when the market recovers, they will go back up in value. Um, so I do think it is still a very good buy at today's money. Um, and it's worth also mentioning they did make a convertible version of the 509 GTO called the SA Aperta. That is one of the rarest, rarest Ferraris ever made, um, especially for a modern one. There's only officially 80 cars worldwide and I think only eight UK uh, supply cars and there they sell for over a million pounds. So that is really one for the collector. Okay, so the market on the F12 TDF has certainly been an interesting one. Um, so the car was launched back in 2015. So the original base price of the car was just shy of 340,000 pounds. Lots of options to tick on this car. Um, so most decent spec cars were just over 400,000 pounds. But when it launched in, in 2016, when they first came out, um, it was really in the peak when the market was booming and cars were originally fetching over a million pounds. I remember the first car we had, uh, we asked £995,000 for it. Um, so they were selling for those kind of figures back then, but today, obviously, the market is not where it was a few years ago. Um, so cars have probably dropped 200 to a quarter of a million pounds since then. Um, so they're still about double what they cost new. So obviously proven to be a very good investment for the first owners, not so much for the people that paid over a million pounds. But look, this is still a very, very special car. Um, it's really the last of a dying breed. The V12 naturally aspirated engines are not gonna be around forever. We may see it one more time. Um, for the V12s in terms of the 812 lightweight version, um, but Ferrari are really going towards plug-in hybrids for the future. Um, something very important happened after the development of this car. Ferrari went public, so it became a public company where some people would say they're more interested now in volume and building lots and lots of cars, there's lots of new models, uh, and now they're more concerned with making money um, so there are less limited number cars. Um, the fastest Ferrari that's gonna come out in the future is something called the SF90, which is, is plug-in hybrid and is not a limited number. So maybe something's to be said for the last sort of era of these kind of cars. It's definitely gonna be an important car in the future. It's definitely one of the all-time great Ferraris and I think it could turn out to be a very good investment in the long term. Okay, so there you have it, the F12 TDF and the 599 GTO, two of the all-time great Ferraris. Which one is the better buy? That is such a difficult question. Um, the 599 GTO, you're gonna save the best part of a quarter of a million pounds. Um, you know, it's a rarer car, it's got that famous GTO badge. It's rawer, it feels a little bit more old school, but the TDF, it's just so intoxicating. It's got a, a greater depth of talents. There's a bit more about it. It's got a more distinctive design, I think, but it's just so hard to split them. I think you've got to have both, um, but we'd love to hear from you. What do you think's the better buy? But look, we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you like the content we're putting out. Give us a thumbs up if you are, and we'll see you again very soon.